So I feel like in this particular game, the scenario is reversed. I feel like Weaver, as well as Templar Assassin, need to get a ton out of the early Prepare game to really battle. have a chance in the mid game. But we'll talk about more of that. Let's actually welcome the multicast. This is game two of Navi versus Newbie. And I gotta say, this is a very important match for Navi. If they lose, they'll still make it to Key Arena, but in the loser bracket. And this will be the first TI ever that Navi gets in, but it starts in the loser's bracket. Every time, every year before this, they start in the winner bracket, right? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, one, yes, TI, they TI, three, yeah. Yes, they have. Unfortunately, though, like, it's been, it's a little bit more of like an exclusive club, the winner's bracket now. Yeah. Like, there's only four teams that get to go there, so it's a lot harder to get in there. But they'll be fighting up against and it would be like the remake of TI2 finals if uh, Invictus Gaming and Navi do fight themselves out in the next best of three. But if they're going to get to that, they have to beat Newbie right now. And that's still a tall ass. Newbie are currently on a nice little run of games. They've had themselves a long day, because that's another bad thing for Newbie as well. They know, like, because of their positioning coming out of the group stage, they stay in TI for now because they won the game up against Titan. But if they also win this battle up against Na'Vi, they then face up against a, T uh, a full best of three up against Invictus Gaming. Three full best of threes, all in one day for the biggest competition of the year. I would imagine, though, if, if teams could play that long, it's probably the teams the from China, like begins. Newbie and IG, because they scrim and practice long duration of the day, so... Yeah. Well, I, I think we're very far from that point yet. Let's see if Navi could even take this game first and bring it to a game three. Well, off we go, man. Let's run through our lanes very, very quick. So, uh, Havos, would you believe it, bottom lane? We have Kuro and Dandy in the middle lane. It's the Wiz combo again. And uh, this time it's going to be with Tiny. Up towards the top lane is Funnic on the Clockwork. And uh, Puppy will be the Roaming Earthshaker. Also should note, too, that uh, we did see a bit of a mission from Kuro as well as Funnic to get this aggressive observer working on the top lane. They did this one they, uh, just a while back. So they turned it up to run up there as quickly as they possibly could. Be a good one to actually protect your clockwork. How's gonna be playing up top here? Weaver is gonna be here. We have Shantrum playing the support. Disruptor in the jungle is gonna be Banana with the Enchantress. Two smoke in, in the sack, or sorry, in his inventory. Mm -hmm. He'll be looking for a lot of ganks. Mu on the mid lane, it's gonna have a tough time against this dual combo. Last but not least, it's gonna be Xiao Wei on the bottom lane playing Tai Hunter once again. This is his fourth Tai Hunter game, I wanna to say today. It's been a lot, man. And no, no, you're right, you're right. You're right. Oh, here, mid lane here, toss back. Mu. Force uh, to pop that refresh again. There's, there's no help, there's yeah. no help, because at that time, there. Ikura was uh, doing the stacking. But that, that can and will happen. He failed the stack. the stack. The stack didn't complete. This particular camp is very hard to stack. The, the one on the mid. And here comes the smoke gang, though. Yeah, Banana's having a look. You managed to pick up what the Harpy we were talking about. Normally that lets her harass her in the lane, but look at Moo. They're diving in so deep for him. Uh -oh. Now the Centaur's got uh -oh. a movement. Koro, the whole stop misses. The blast Look at the will be first there, damage. the intent, Koro, one oh, with life, sends his life points, and the avalanche connects on the centaur, the harpy, oh, and he Koro has to go all the way back. That harpy will kill him with one hit if he's not, keep, not, too, not too careful. And then he's hoping for the last hit in the centaur. He'll at least get the experience, but this harpy is hunting, and Koro is not giving him the chance. I mean, the harpy could just stay mid and she keep blasting on Dendi as well. There you go, like the lane is won now, or at least uh, the terrible. bottle's coming up here from Dendi. So it's coming out in that little ferret. It'll arrive shortly, and then uh, we'll see Kuro and Denny back up to full life. But Kuro actually just used tether. He just used tether. He's got to wait six seconds before he can tether and heal him up. Uh, this is such a. He's also brought Dendy's boots with him on the courier. All right, Dendy being the courier. Uh, is, is he? Is he going to uh, wait? Um, the boots of speed are currently on Kuro, but they belong to Dendy. I think he wanted to use Sal first and make a spot, make a slot. Maybe. Yeah. Sunshine's locked inside some cogs up on the top lane. It's like Funic was having a bit of a party with him. Tendi Avalanche, toss combo is not there, he's short of mana still. Just spamming out a little bit here, Aww. and now Dendi is the, uh, the Satyr has now come towards the middle lane. It's the Nukas coming out from the Enchantress. Just trying to make Dendi's life a living hell. At least this one in theory could miss, right? Like, take some skill. How's that bottom lane looking, man? We haven't even touched on Havos and Xiao Wei. I mean, you expect, you expect Xiao Wei to get experience in farm, but at the same time, Havos should be leading the farm chart as he is. Very similar to game one, right? I don't think you're ever going to get a, get a kill on Xiaowei. He just keeps dropping so low. The stat has only got one more blast. He comes out from Puppy, but there's a small gap for Moo to get back out again. Dendi, he doesn't have mana. He's short by eight. That would have been first blood if they got his toss back. He would have to be back in range of the town to do so, but you're right. Havor, bottom lane, draining out the damage of Xiaowei. 70 damage, 84 damage, and now Xiaowei's backed out. He actually gives life with every attack. 
I mean, there's another way to see how, how this game's been going is that there's so much pressure against Mu on the mid lane that you're forcing Banana to send most of his creeps mid. That means Banana is not ganking Razor. That means Banana is not pushing any towers. So mm -hmm. there is Enchantress in the game, but generally you pick Enchantress to do a lot more offensive stuff. And so far, Banana is not really able to do that. But one, one thing he is still doing is out-leveling Puppy. Puppy, for all of his wonderful work and this roaming Earthshaker, yeah, he's going to control the Invis route, and that's a really nice one to grab. He got spotted out by Banana picking it up, which means now Moose can be really defensive on this lane. But it's the fact that Puppy isn't pulling, he's not finding levels, he's not finding farm of any way, shape, or form. That's true. Although Wisp is doing those double sacks again, <laughs> uh, and that double sack is going to be key for Earthshaker to actually get big. Xiao has been pushed back up that bottom lane again. Staggling's becoming a real problem for him. He's, a... he's still got 12 CS, but up against a 26 for rate. Yeah, that sentry ward is <laughs> just watching Puppy. Who knows it? The intent is also here. Puppy gets attacked with Bell. The Hawk stomp. He's going to get himself out. The vision will go off. Moo, where's that last attack? He gets it. First blood goes to Templar Assassin. The Hawk stomp follows up again. Then he's tossing back the centaur. There's another kill, this time going the way of the Enchantress. Oh, and it's actually 3 for 0 because Clockwork gets picked up on the top lane by Al. What a play Radiant's here. Like, they know the Invisory. Banana comes mid, drops a sentry, and nobody does anything, right? They just stand there and pretend they don't know. And as soon as Earthshaker comes in, Moo just gives him the Mel Strike. And that Minus Armor is legit, especially when you get the help of the Centaur and the Creep Wave right clicking. So, three quick succession kills. Templar Assassin suddenly level six. And then you have Weaver getting solo kill up top. This is not looking good for Na'Vi. No, this is this is like the worst thing that could really happen. You got Weaver is getting buffed up. More importantly, too, the clockwork. He's not going to have enough. Well, I would say enough items right now. Look, he's got boots and a stick and a stout shield. This isn't enough when you're hook shotting into someone like a Templar or a Weaver to survive when you initiate. The avalanche is just becoming harassment. But now Dendi is also battling up against the elements. This wild, this wild wing. He's just sending the tornado down towards the mid, and then he's like, "Screw this! Can we just farm up?" Damn it! I even got mud golems in this one. Why is my my life so hard. The bottom lane though is where Puppy can really find a kill. Zhao has been really over aggressive. He's got Ravage, he's winning for this. The static wins to go. Zhao Wei backs up and now Puppy, he's got a lot of the lot. As far in front as possible. There goes the Ravage. One fish, I don't know if it's gonna be enough to kill off Zhao Wei. It won't be, but one attack from a boss, it will be. So Tyler goes down and finally now to get themselves on the board. And it goes to the rather fat Havos on the bottom lane. Yeah, Havos, interestingly, in this game actually gone for face boots. Normally you don't see Razor going that. They, they opt for tank ability because you get the damage from the link, but that face boot was every part of them getting that kill there. I do want to mention that that Ravage probably should not have been used because that's kind of a long cooldown spell and he didn't even save him, but... Never mind that here. And maybe thought he was like getting out to safety would probably be better and keeping Navi without a kill, but you're right, Gang is coming in. Mu as well as uh, Banana already moved themselves a long way and Jao TP'd into it. And of course the fifty comes out again from Puppy. Of course gonna try and juke it around the tree lines, moves up and then has to cut through, but he can go tango, so there's no way out. One last flash kill is all he can really give. So the rotation is worth the Templar Assassin is the one to get the kill. I was wondering if this would really be worth it for Moot, considering he's given, he's given space to Dendi in this middle lane. Top lane, there's a glimpse back right now, and Funnick, he's got the bugs on him. No, actually, he does not. He uses Cog, pushes Hao away, and he's running to the right side. No more glimpse for a long, long time, but Hao giving the chase thanks to the Tsukuchi spell, and that's going to be yet another kill. Not enough. One to five in favor of Newbie. Oh. And with that now, uh, Newbie again. Pushing their advantage even further, Clockwork, still no level 6, so still no jumping coming out from Navi. It's the same thing for the Wisp, he's not level 6 yet, so there's no relocate available for them. And any kind of movement around this middle lane is being, is being scouted out by the fact that Moose, hey, Moose got ward traps. He's going to start to plant them a, a lot more around the map, but the main thing he wants, bringing in low, so the intent is about to rotate in through the tree line, can basically get the kill. But they'll have to come in through the back, they got Jiao in here with no Ravage. Enchantress enough to try and just take you to stack. The stack. That's, I, I gotta say, that's much more important than getting the gank at this point. Well, if they move any deeper down, they may get it. And Puppy, he's right next to the Observer Ward. And Zhao Wei starts with the Anchor Smash. Puppy not in range of that. While the middle lane is still battling it out. Avalanche toss. Mu out of refraction charges. Now it's back off cooldown with the meld. Battling under oh. Dandy. And he's got enough damage to get through it. And he may even turn over towards Kuro right now. One more attack with the phase boots going. It's a double kill. He turns an initiation of Navi into a perfect battle for himself. And now pushing Nubi's lead Radiance even higher. There are over 4,000 gold and over 5,000 experience. Only 8 minutes into this. And Banana has just realized there's a stack here. If he grabs his Wild Wing. 
He can actually farm up the entire Dyer's thing. Bottom he can. <laughs> I think he will. There you go. Radiant's there you go. He's got to get it out. Goodbye. He's got to get it out, though. It can't take any more damage than this. Uh, it's fine. So he's got to lose the aggro, and then he turns it around. Then start, yep, starts the tornado. He's going to be so quick about this. He's going to take out a double stack here and probably get Radiant level six and a half from all of this. Meanwhile, oh, tier one. Lane. Yeah. Well, there's a fight over the stack. <laughs> there's a fight. But Shao, he's got Ravage back. He's, he's cutting it off. Like, bring it on. Ravage is going to come out. Static Storm's going to be there as well. He did pay his life for it, but I think everybody's going to die as a result. Of both. Oh, what a clock! What a hook for the glimpse back here. I don't know. What, what did he die? He died. He died. The Enchantress and Penis reached him, and then Hal able to follow up with the attack. Back into the clockwork, picking him up. How looking for the kill over on Clora. Back inside the base, flies up towards the high ground. The impetus damage from Banana really working hard. How is inside the base under the tier 3 tower. He's got seven warm charges and not a single hero from Narbi to try and make the most of the fact he's diving under a tier 3 tower while the tier 2 is still up in the middle lane. Newbie had this game firmly by the balls. Oh my goodness. And by the way, they have Templar Assassin, so Roshan is essentially there as well. Mel, a lot of minus armor. <laughs> If they even need that. So what happened to the stack? The stack is entirely dead. I don't yes. even know what happened to the stack during that. Probably... Well, let's check the experience graph. Like, there's no spike upwards, right? Like, it's just <laughs> downwards. So I imagine it's just newbie <laughs> taking... Hey, it's technically flatlined. It's technically flatlined. So maybe Navi got some of that? <laughs> I, I still can't know. believe that Nubi had that kind of advantage. Like, you think about it, you've got an 8,000 gold advantage 10 minutes into the game, and you've taken one tier one tower. Dyer's middle tower. That's a bad sign for attack. Navi, right? That's a really bad sign for Navi. Especially considering the amount of power that's coming out of Nubi right now. Who's just running at a horse in the middle lane? Static Link will take away 21 points of the damage. But Mu doesn't care. As long as he's got refraction, he's got bonus. And now you're bringing everyone mid. This is a desperation all mid. Like, they need to get multiple towers, and I. I almost feel like if they lose one more fight, that's it. There we go. Now be a bet in their life on this roll. And they're looking towards the middle lane. Radiant's bottom they can't tower even bring this down. Look at top lane. I was like, oh, okay. My team will remotely defend this. Zhao Wei is going to be pushing out bottom lane. And of course, with, with Hao and Zhao Wei on the opposite lanes, attack. Navi knows they're going to lose on this trade. Yeah, and now the TP's come back. Then he's like, okay, I got to farm up bottom lane. But this is a tiny. He's 11 minutes into a game with treads in a circlet. And that's the greatest thing we can see about his items. There's no head of Midas. There's no point booster starting to go into an Aghanim Scepter. He is just so far behind everything. And how? The man we talked about, we saw a 23-minute uh, Lincoln Sphere, a 27-minute de uh, Desolator coming out during the last game. At this point, he could be finishing his, uh, his Lincoln Sphere at about maybe 17, 18 minutes in. Yeah, if he gets a couple more kills, and how he plays it like a way he's always looking for kills. Constantly backstabbing. He sees Puppy, and Puppy's level 4. He's gonna come in for a solo kill, I think. He's looking yeah, for it. Here he we go. Can, he can get it as well. Get Totem Stomp. Okay, he's... He doesn't need to like push himself any any further on this. Zhao Wei's a long way down here on the bottom lane, but there's a lot of TP support coming in. And move banana. Here comes your result. A force. He's actually stunned up by the centaur from the enchantress, and then the follow-up coming out from move. So quick as well. And then looking for more, diving underneath that tier one tower. Then he walked past that creep. And now he's quickly TPing back out towards the middle lane. While how bugs go out, it's over on Puppy, so he'll dive under this one. Total stop to start with. Time lapse is out the damage. Puppy shouldn't die Radiant's at the bug, he'll be able to get rid of it easily. But it still pushes him back, and the bottom tower belongs to Nubi. Basically, done this where force out the TP, secure tier one top, and basically more Radiant's and more map control going to the side of Nubi. He's coming for Dendi now. With no time left, so it's a rather difficult thing to do. But Corey, look where he is! He's walking underneath an Observer Whoa. Ward to snipe out the DD rune. Now he needs Denny to walk himself over, and there's your glimpse. He's gonna drag him straight back over again, and Moo, waiting. Templar Assassin, attack. embracing the little ball of Ethereal Being. But not in a loving way. This is where you go, Roche? Yep, and that's exactly what they do. You got a Templar Assassin, who has level 4 now. Yep. <laughs> He's level 11, 13 minutes into the game. You have Mech over on your team. You have Enchantress, who actually never even leveled up Untouchable, so this road down a little bit harder than it, than it had to be. But they got everything they need, including the Aegis Immortal on the back of Mu, who's gone full stats build. So he's actually gone for drums. He's got the Yasha. It can go straight into either a Manta or, or what I actually kind of like to see is just get the blink. In terms of impossibility, this game is still not as bad for Navi as it was for Titan during that game three. So, 
Yeah, but, well, Newbie did start with a two and a half level advantage yeah, from the very, I mean, very start. Uh, like, <laughs> this. You, you can have Tiny get finishing that drums and, like, maybe get a double kill in the next fight. And that could shoot him straight up to level three, or level 11, excuse me. And just, it just goes straight for the agony. That would help. Then. That really would help. Like, I, I'm basically listing the best case scenario here. Yeah. Like, we're, we're looking at the bright side of life. Like, Monty Python be our motivators right now. Like, the realistic side is that there's a Ravage and a Static Storm that you're fighting into. They're coming out to fight. Puppy's moving up into the tree line right now. I don't know if this is meant to be like a fissure, which is meant to reach across this direction or not. Like, from the secret shop. But either way, Moo just starts doing scouting with TA traps. Invis room for a Vorst. Are they really going to try and fight on top Radiant's of the tier 2 tower? tower? I suppose it's better here than anywhere else. Observer Wars down as well, trying to see anyone who's moving up. And they go for a trade off. Kuro Dyer's and Denny will have to relo relocate to be part of this one. They need room to try and beat down this tower. At the same time, they oh, he's still sitting behind it. He sees where Sunshine is all the way in the back. The fortification is making it a little bit more difficult for the, for the Radiant Sun to bring down that mid tower. Radiant while the top tower still got fortification, fortified. waiting for this relocate. Of course, he's almost used the entire duration. Is he how going out of here? And Hookshot in. They're just looking for the Strangler. Banana will be the first one. And now, as the team being out, he timed himself back into the engagement. Looking for a boss. Ravage comes down from Shallowways. Funnick and a boss. They're about to go down with Weave of Scarab over on him. Funnick will take a fall. Wow, that hurts with the meld hit. And Denny and Koro, they never even relocated in to be part of that fight. And if they relocate now, they'll just, well, they might have to. Buy back, they have to relocate to base, make the base defense right now. Unfortunately, it was the Wisp that had the media and not Denny. Maybe they have relocated if that was the case. They checked for the route. No, they're actually just going bot. Why are they not relocating? Uh, I don't know. Dyer's straight, straight up TP. Okay. Yep. There's only, well, actually, they canceled the TP. Denny actually stopped his TP. They wait down here on the bottom lane. Now, Moo comes down to defend it. And Kuro is in, and Dendi are in no position to fight. That's with no DD runes still. I said, just leave the top lane alone. Go back into your jungle. Continuously farm up. It's like they're waiting for the Hallelujah play, but they need Denny to be so much bigger before they can even attempt that. But then look what their movement is. Even if they go down the lane, there's an Observer Ward in the bottom lane from Newbie that watches at any point that Navi are adding some level of pressure or heroes behind it all. And with that too, Howe's already on the way down south too. They see Kuro and Denny walking and standing underneath that ward. Yeah, uh, this Navi draft doesn't have a hero like, for example, Sand King that we saw Titan draft multiple times, which unexpectedly gives you a ton of burst damage out of nowhere. I guess Tiny comes close as that type of hero, but that's, on, if, that's assuming he's on top of all the hero and does a perfect Avatar's combo. But, uh... Yeah, I, I, I don't know where this fight really will begin. I, I don't know where it's meant to either. There's a 16 minute Lincoln Spear over on Hal. Meanwhile, Kuroki has a 16 minute boots. God, top lane. They bring in a lot of heroes. There's two TPs and two heroes rotating in. Sunset's yeah, the first one over and he sees Funnick and the Fissure. Well, it only triggers the Lincoln Spear of Hal. Funnick is going to try and bring down Sunshake, but Sunshake puts him in a wall of course. That is on while Puppy dies on the lane. Banana running himself away, a boss with a nice amount of stolen damage to kill the Banana, 158 points of damage would do that. Funny Cox trying to push back the rest of Newbie. How he's really had a lot of that burned out of him. And Razor, he's about to lose the bonus damage of his. He needs to TP up right now. Yep. But there's no mana, even with a one charge, he's still short. And he knows it too. So the Gus will go. Hal's gonna be right behind him. There's no point to it, man. He's dead no matter what he does. Sunshine's gonna put it back off the down. He's underneath the tower, can't get the kill on it. And that's now 19 to 4 in favor of Newbie. Middle lane though, Dendi, they're trying to push it out, attack. but then Ty TP on the way in, and the push stops. I mean, that was as good as a fight they could have asked for, right? They traded one for one, they got a tower denier, and they created a ton of space for Dendi. They lost their tier 2 tower in the bottom lane. They're, they're gonna lose those towers regardless. <laughs> like, I mean, you, you get what you can, and I think Andrew's about to also one-shot Koro. <laughs> TA traps on it down, looking to try and relocate. The avalanche stopped it! He actually pulled Dendi away to safety. Now, Puppy is in the neighborhood here. With one fissure, he could keep Moo out. Moo's not even sticking around. The DD rune's worn off. He just leaves a TA trap behind. And uh, Rocker will also scout the fact that Kuro is fine. He'll tear the just in cases. dendi has got the point booster coming out to him. They're really desperately just trying to get him his Aghanim Scepter. But even once he's got it, like, where is... Do they actually have enough, like, physical damage and control to get a kill? I think it's more of an item that not necessarily helps them win a fight, but helps you stay alive, be much tankier, and get to your next item much quicker as well. Because it could be considered as a farming item, like a battle fury. True. So, I mean, hey, the base is, is still alive, so there's more game to be played. That is the upside form. 
Unfortunately, it's about to come under siege. All five heroes from Nubia are gathering up. While uh, we see trolls and wild wings out from Banana. That's taking a lot of damage on these on these neutrals as well. So not gonna be a really great to fight, but then Radiant's you have an undead army anyway, so it's really yep. They push the tier two tower out. There's already that mithril hammer over on how it's gonna be like a 22 minute death so at this rate. And uh, the horse towards the front lines of the plastic field. He'll get rid of the undead army, but the bugs come out and they're on the back of a horse. So we get that negative armor with the melt of ne negative one, limp straight back in. And a horse just came out to sniff the roses. But pushes up the daisies instead. 20 to 4 with no razor available. I don't know if Nubi just want to go on the back of this uh, on the back of this creek wave. Push high ground. They still have ravage. Why they not? Have every single ultimate available. They just just expired, but you have BKB on Mu, so that's his protection. They don't have a suppressive on that. They can last the But there's a Ravage already ready. Static Storm's gonna come up. Ravage is on everybody. And look at them die under that static storm. They were in there for a second, and now they're not. That was meant to be the hallelujah jump in, but uh, the second you, you hook yourself in and the static storm came out from Sunshine, there was no way to pop up any ability, and now the wall is up again. Dendi is trapped inside of this, pumping with the fissure, keeping his Yahweh to move away. Hit a boss! He is not where he wants to be! Outside of the base, Yahweh on low life, back himself up, but Hal is going up against the boss, but Banana's pure damage, and the Impair's working hard, and Poppy evaporates to the mount here. Oh, this is just like mercy, mercy, please! All of the all of the spells are being used. They don't have Radiant's buyback because they just use it as well. Attack. I don't know. Navi is just like oh, 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 maybe you can just lose the game. Dyer's now Tempty turns from Avalanche, tossed with the melt hit, strikes on the negative eight armor oh, on him, oh, and it's so easy to finish the job. Whisper's gone. GG. Twenty minutes in. Quick series, good series, end of series. And Ruby moves on. Now, we don't have Na'Vi in the Winter Sage anymore. It's gonna be a newbie versus IG. Oh, what, a, what a series, man. I gotta say, even though IG finished much higher in the group stage, I definitely could see newbie taking them down. Yeah, oh man, I wouldn't be against it. Newbie are also gonna have a lot of momentum coming out of this. You've just basically stomped out Na'Vi. That's literally what they've done just now. And Titan. And Titan. So yeah. they can be sitting there going, okay guys, we're having a really good day of Dota. We're up against Invictus Gaming. We know these guys left, right, and center. We've played them in so many competitions and we've beat them in so many competitions. Let's just knock them out. We go straight.